Hello my darlings, it's me, Zui, and today I'm delivering you a Dabi story. Dabi is probably the most uh, beloved character in the League of Villains, which means I'm expecting at least a couple of hundred views. Come on guys, come on. To ensure I get a couple of hundred views, please, for the love of God, uh, watch the video until the end, like or dislike, and comment something down below. This is how you increase my standing in the YouTube algorithm. Of course, you can always share the video around, or support me on Patreon, or my merch store. Both links are down in the description. Uh, and to ensure that you do all of that, here is the cute animal picture of the day. The cute animal picture of the day is here to remind you to do exactly that. Also, today's cute animal picture of the day was provided by one of our fellow Discord members. The Discord is just like the merch store and the Patreon, down in the description. Thank you, Scarlet the Simp. Now, let's get right into the story. It's been a while since you two had a fight. It's been even longer since the last time you had thrown something. And it's been a long time since you called him a narcissistic man-child. So you left right then and there. At least it was a warm summer night, so you didn't have to worry about the cold or getting wet. You had walked for what felt like hours through the streets of Camino Ward, occasionally stopping by a ramen shop to eat something. Your quirk, Grendel, required almost constant caloric intake while allowing you to spew your stomach acid at command. It was gross, but... The acid was strong enough to temporarily blind opponents and just corrosive enough to damage metals, making you both a walking flashbang and lockpick for security doors. Your feet had begun hurting from your endless walking. Head hung low, you tried your best to not start crying. That was until your head hit something solid. You looked up. Cold blue eyes were looking straight into yours. The guy's body was scarred. His hair was black as the night sky, and he wore the sickest leather jacket you'd ever seen. He also looked only to be just a few years older than you. He made a noise that was somewhere between annoyance and intrigue. Sorry, you muttered barely able to suppress your own emotions. And you are? He asked. Huh? He chuckled. <laughs> Don't go running around looking upset like you. A toothy grin plastered across his face before his hands found your shoulders. Hey, why don't we get a drink? You can tell me all your problems, dollface. No, it was you who smiled. <laughs> Only if I get to order my own drinks. He gently slapped your back. Oh, that's more like it. He didn't take your hand. He didn't speak. And he walked at an excited pace. Not too fast, but also not too slow. He led you into a nightclub. After bribing the bouncer to let you two pass the line of already drunk young people. He let you pass the dance floor to a lavishly decorated bar. Brutal neon lights were shining everywhere. Over the speakers, the DJ played heavily distorted rap music. The guy you walked in with raised two fingers and the guy at the bar went to work. Hey, I thought I told you I'd buy my own. The man chuckled. Those aren't for you, those are for me. You chuckled in all of your own drinks. Drink after drink went down both your throats. You must have been used to alcohol. You yourself took longer to get intoxicated thanks to your quirk. So did that count as technically you being used to it as well? The guy was now playing with his shot glass. So, got to talk now, Dolly. You grinned. 
I had a fight with my better half. For a moment his smile faltered ever so slightly. It was adorable. The fucking prick thought picking on me after a hard day of work was a good idea. The guy scratched his scarred chin. Alright, go on. Like, we're both pros. He just went to fancy pants UA as a high schooler and got to fight villains at age 15. And now he thinks he has the right to show off. He ordered another shot. I mean, yeah, he is number four on the leaderboard, which is funny to me. The man next to you flinched for a moment. Something wrong? He asked. His eyes were moving quickly from the dancing crowd to the DJ. And what was that about, stranger? You leaned forward. Scared I lock you up for late night drinking? That seemed to relax him completely and he smiled at you. <laughs> Name's Darby. You told him yours. So the glorious ground zero is your better half? You nodded. That means you must be Beowulf, right? You nodded again. It seemed fitting with the name of your quirk. The only reason you know my name is because I'm the nobody that number four is dating, huh? When I break up with him, I'll be forgotten within a week. Darby ordered two more shots. Hmm, is this all about fame or do you love him? This question stung a little. It felt as if you were about to say something that would either make or break your relationship with Bakugo. It was love for like 70% of our relationship. You felt heat rising up inside your gut. The liquor... It started to work. After that, well, the past couple weeks, I realized what a narcissistic piece of shit he is. It's always about him and how much he hates Deku. You giggled. <laughs> the guy hates him so fucking much. So much tension. You gulped down the rest of your burning liquid shot. I should just fuck already. You grinned. And let me watch. Dobby gave a hearty laugh. <laughs> Sounds like you need to release a lot of steam, doll. You glanced at him. When is he going to run out of doll nicknames for you? Hey, Dobby! Who's your friend? You heard a disturbingly familiar squeaky voice. A blonde girl wrapped herself around Darby, and you narrowed your eyes. Tolka? You grunted. Of course, the hot mysterious guy is a villain. Toga glanced at you. I didn't kill you last time. You chuckled and looked at your small shot glass collection. You threw a knife at me. I missed, she retorted. I should fight you guys. You chuckled sarcastically. But too many civilians, and to be honest, I don't care anymore. Toga humphed. <laughs> What's wrong, Toga? Mumbled Darby into her ear. She made a fool out of me, and you're raising a glass with her. You raised an eyebrow. You just meant you lost your little tussle with me, and your little knife. Toga blushed in anger. That was my favorite one, and you took it from me! She shouted. After that, the barkeeper glanced at the three of you. You were too loud. But he didn't say anything. If it really was your favorite, you would have managed to hit me with it. Here, let me order us around. You said with a cheeky grin, before ordering for your new friends. After she finished her shot, a blush immediately came onto her face. Clearly, she was a lightweight. Buy me a new one so I can stab you with it. You leaned on your arm. You just gave away your intentions. Why would I do that? Toka blushed harder. If your smartness wouldn't make me so honey, I would choke you. 
you burst into laughter. What? Did, did I say something wrong? Dobby gently pushed her off of him. Yeah, I think that's enough. Go play with your boyfriend. Toka gave another humph before vanishing in the crowds of people. After a few minutes of silence, Dobby spoke up. The civilians aren't the real reason you aren't calling the cops on us, are you? It was right. I need to blow some steam, Dobby. It's just... So frustrating. He smiled. Eh, then come. He threw some money on the bar. Keep the change. Then he let you outside. Not that you were moving... The alcohol didn't manage to affect you. So you've wrapped his arm around your shoulder so you wouldn't tumble on the ground. Darby led you to a junkyard. Using his quirk, he burned a small hole into the fence and you followed. What are we doing here? Blowing off some steam? You giggled. I'm nowhere near drunk enough to blow some steam with you. He coughed and blushed. He immediately knew what you meant. Well, I'm too drunk to think about this stuff without getting distracted, so... Do you want to have some fun like a villain? Yes or no? It was kind of cute how he tried not to sound like he was doing an innuendo. After some more teasing, you accepted his offer. He led you to the part of the junkyard that was filled with old cars. Think fast! He shouted and and threw a rusty pipe wrench at you. You caught it with a smile. What now, Chitin Chris? He walked up to you and grinned. You are going to beat the ever-loving shit out of these cars. The next time you call me Chitin Chris, I'll kill you. You leaned your head forward and whispered, Oh, is that a date lover boy? Before he could react to your obvious flirt, you twirled around and smashed the wrench against one of the car's windows, shattering it to pieces. Dobby put his hands behind his head and smiled. You always wanted to do this. When you were little, you and your friends used to collect empty glass bottles and throw them on the ground until they shattered, which sometimes sort of gave you this tickling feeling looking at pristine car windows. Eventually, the villain joined in. It was fun. Not as much as you expected for all those years. And he noticed. That's with that face. He said with a grin, while a beat of sweat ran down his face. Ah, this isn't what I expected, to be honest. You scratched your shoulder. I guess it's because these cars are trash. Like, no one would care. I'd love to beat up a sports car. Dobby gave you a light smile. When you wanna break then, little marionette? He paused. Uh, sound better in my hand. You two burst into loud laughter. Hearts. You finally answered. He grabbed your hand and dragged you off the junkyard. You blushed. His hand was... Soft, despite the scars, and warm, so warm. Weeks had passed. Ground Zero was on high tail after a new addition to the League of Villains. A woman, simply known as the Mother. She was known to be very agile and stealthy. Her costume covered her entire body in black cloth. She was responsible for multiple robberies and assaults on low-class heroes. While no death was so far connected to her, it was only a matter of time until that would happen. And tonight, she was sighted with the sociopathic Darby. After all these years, Bakugu was still not over what happened at the camp. So he was very eager to catch both villains. Maybe this would finally grant him the rank above Deku's. And finally. And finally, after an arduous chase, 
he had cornered the mother in an alleyway. Her skinny body pressed against a wall. While he slowly approached her, he spoke. Well, well, well. Who could the rat drag back in? The woman giggled, muffled by the mask. Stop laughing, or I'll kill you. The black-suited woman stopped moving for a moment, before mockingly chuckling. <laughs> you always were more bark than bite, Baku baby. You said with a mocking tone, before the darkness of Korogiri began to envelop you, saving you just in the nick of time. Seeing Bakugo's angry, confused, and almost sad face filled you with so much pleasure. This all was worth it. He definitely must be making himself responsible for this, which he was. It filled you with so much satisfaction and pleasure. It was nice being the villain.